This is Nicholas Kristoff, and I'm back in Bahrain. I was last here 10 months ago when this family-run dictatorship opened fire on its own people. It's an American ally, but it crushed the hopes of an Arab Spring here more decisively than in any other country. But today, a continued protest movement still burbles along irrepressibly. Nearly every night, teens and young adults protest in their villages. It's as ritualized as homework. This will end with riot police firing tear gas. Some people may get hurt. So what does it achieve? <laughs> when the police arrive, protesters in the front raise their hands to show they're unarmed. But a young man in the back hurls a rock. That's a common act that hugely undermines their cause. Tear gas, rubber bullets, sound bombs. Journalist, 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 American. That's the voice of Adam Ellick, a New York Times video journalist traveling with me. I said to him, American journalist, and then he hit me. She broke this part of my camera. They dragged him into a police car. Now, if that's what riot police do to a foreign journalist, you can only imagine what they do when they catch a local kid with a rock. Nick. I came through the fog of tear gas to see if I could extricate Ellick. The police then detain me as well. They detest the protesters, convinced they're paid by Iran. Yeah. Bahrain is very good country. Nice to meet you. It's okay. We were freed after 30 minutes. The government later announced that we had sought police protection. That's a blatant lie and a reminder to be wary of government pronouncements. Bahrain is my favorite country in the region. Its economy is booming. Women are empowered. And America likes it too. A close ally, Bahrain is strategically important to the U.S., and the Navy's Fifth Fleet is based here. But Bahrain's human rights record is unforgivable. You either listen to the people or you don't listen to the people. I think the government chose to listen to the people. I toured the island with Sakhir Al Khalifa, a government spokesman and a member of the royal family. His last name symbolizes everything the protesters are against. I was held in traffic, and because I heard it so much, I didn't notice, but I was actually tapping on the <laughs> steering wheel saying death to Al-Khalifa. I was like, wait a minute, that, that doesn't make sense. So this is where it all began. Sakhir argues yes. that Bahrainis on the street don't represent the majority, uh, and he insists that reforms are on the way. There is this responsibility for every royal family member because you're respected by the people and you're seeing as, you know, the, the, the tribe that come and leads Bahrain. But at the same time, the government is almost a family affair. If you look at the key portfolios, um, everybody's last name is Al Khalifa. And what your family has not built is a robust democracy. Yeah. And that is what people are asking for. The goal is definitely there to reach, you know, uh, the governance is going to be by the people themselves. What, where the conflict exists is the speed of that progress. And uh, we need to, uh, I, I believe, that pick up the speed is, uh, a little bit, make it a little bit more faster. Yeah. Let's be frank. If we want to know what Bahrainis really want, there's an easy way to find out. It's called free elections. When I see people demanding democracy, my instinct is to support them. Yeah, yeah. Soccer says that new reforms here include the government's recently commissioned independent report about human rights violations. And it's true that some changes are underway, not least the fact that I got a visa. But so far, I've heard so many lies that I'm very skeptical. And if the government truly wants to demonstrate its seriousness, why not just fire the hardline prime minister after 40 years in office? The protests are unfolding not only among the angry youth in the villages here in Bahrain, but also among middle class professionals like these doctors and teachers behind me at a demonstration at the Ministry of Labor. They're protesting being tortured, being arrested, and being suspended from their jobs for something as little as liking a page on Facebook. For America, the challenge is this. We have been protesting abuses by Syria, by Libya, but this is our ally who is cracking down on a democratic movement with American weapons. The Obama administration has been too quiet about this, is now proposing to selling weapons to Bahrain. 
I'm afraid that we are coming out on the wrong side of history. I shall introduce you to my colleagues that's been been jailed, been tortured, been. You could staff an entire uh, hospital with these doctors. Uh, his son has uh, passed away uh, through the through the events. They've been tortured and are out on bail for offenses, including supporting the protesters. <laughs> An emerging leader of the opposition is this American-educated 28-year-old, Zainab al-Khawaja. This is the al-Khawaja Mosque, and this was built by my great-grandfather, actually. Her father is one of the best-known protest figures in Bahrain. Both he and her husband have been tortured, and both remain in prison. So this is my father. This is actually a really nice picture of him. He has a big smile, and the right police scrapped it up and painted over it. And so what do you think when you see uh, his picture with the face painted over? Um, I'm so proud of my father. He's like the pride of my life. During our interview in a mall cafeteria, we saw another reminder of daily life here. I'm saying they're attacking protesters outside now. The royal family has delivered um, an amazing economy, a pretty broad middle class. Isn't there a risk you're pushing the system in a way that might undermine the way people live? Well, what you're saying is basically saying maybe the conditions here are good enough for you to accept dictatorship. America's silence infuriates human rights activists like Nabil Rajab, whose house gets tear gas so often that four of his rabbits have been killed. Nick, yeah? here, come here to oh, the okay. office. America's best-known export here in Bahrain is tear gas. These weapons are sold by private American companies, but the U.S. government approves the deals. If you ever have a fire here, your house is going to be uh, a mess. And this is a rubber bullet. Nabil's collection of American weapon canisters may soon grow. America is considering selling more arms to Bahrain. Why should we provide weapons to a fundamentally undemocratic government. Because we've shown our sincerity. So I think they will make the right choice. Uh, they, they acknowledge the friends that they have over here in Bahrain. <laughs> Finally, I had to pay a visit to one more person before leaving Bahrain. Dr. Ekri, I, I don't recognize you. Dr. Sadiq al ekri a distinguished surgeon, was beaten for treating protesters and then suspended for six months. That is what you look like when I met you. The government says that it is now starting over. You're an expert in uh, plastic surgery, so let me ask, is this just cosmetic, or is this real? <laughs> <laughs> they should retain the trust. If they retain the trust, it is reconstructive, according to plastic surgery. You're constructive, because everything now, it's broken. We have to reconstruct, not just the cosmetic. We have to be, you know, repair what, uh, what's broken. In Bahrain, for the New York Times, I'm Nicholas Kristof.